The first naval battle of World War II did not occur in the European theater, but in the South Atlantic Ocean, near the coasts of Argentina and Uruguay. When the United Kingdom and France declared war on Germany in response to Hitler's invasion of Poland, the Kriegsmarine was so unprepared that its naval arsenal lacked any large-scale warships. Instead, the German Navy had three modest armored ships that the British nicknamed the Pundershiff pocket battleships. One of them was the Admiral Graf Spee, which on December 13, 1939, engaged three powerful British vessels and almost single-handedly cost the Allies their first naval victory. An ill-equipped Kriegsmarine When rising German dictator Adolf Hitler invaded Poland on September 1, 1939, he hoped the takeover would result in a peace agreement with Great Britain and France, as previous occupations during the 1930s appeasement era had failed to incite action among the world's superpowers. So when Britain and France declared war on Germany two days later, Hitler and the rest of the world were stunned. Only two decades after the end of World War I, another massive battle was about to engulf the continent. None of the parties were fully prepared. Britain had a minor army, and the Royal Air Force was in the midst of a modernization process, but their navy was robust and ready for battle. The combined British and French fleets consisted of 23 capital ships, 8 aircraft carriers, and 80 cruisers. In contrast, the Kriegsmarine had a powerful army and the latest aircraft technology, but not a firm footing in terms of naval power. It was common knowledge that Hitler had no experience or interest in naval matters, and had ignored his admiral's advice for years. The Führer even told the Kriegsmarine chief, Grand Admiral Eric Rader, not to be ready for naval battle until 1944 at the earliest. Consequently, when the war started in 1939, the Kriegsmarine's ill-equipped fleet consisted of only three 11,700-ton battleships, the Deutschland, the Admiral Scheer, and the Admiral Graf Spee, as well as two battlecruisers, eight cruisers, and 57 U-boats. Pocket Battleship the Admiral Graf Spee was one of only three armored ships in Germany's fleet. The boat was built in the early 1930s when Hitler pretended to honor the Treaty of Versailles, a post-World War I agreement that forbade Germany from building warships heavier than 10,000 tons. Although modest in size, these Deutschland-class ships were fitted with battleship-class 11-inch guns instead of the more commonly used heavy cruiser 8-inch ones. The ship's combination of speed, long-range, and heavy ammunition made them ideal for hunting merchant vessels. The British nicknamed them Pundershiff, pocket battleships. Named after Admiral Graf Maximilian von Spee, the Graf Spee was launched in northwestern Germany on June 30, 1934, as a proud symbol of Nazi Germany's rising power. It was commandeered by Captain Hans Langstorff, a graduate of the Kiel Naval Academy, who earned the Iron Cross second class during the Battle of Jutland in World War I. The ship was armor-plated, had a crew of 1,150, and could reach 21,500 miles without refueling. Capable of reaching a cruise speed of 26 knots, the Graf Spee could outrun almost any ship. It also carried 14 additional firearms, including torpedo tubes and even two small float planes. A hunt. In September of 1939, the Admiral Graf Spee was deployed to the South Atlantic and Indian Oceans to hunt down small-scale enemy vessels. It managed to sink several merchant ships without loss of life, mainly due to a strict policy by Captain Langstorff, which sought to take all crews on board before sinking the ships. As the Graf Spee strengthened and gained notoriety, Allied naval forces scoured the oceans, looking for the small German raider. They would follow distress calls transmitted by sunken victims to pinpoint its location. Commodore Henry Harwood led a Royal Navy squadron searching for the elusive ship, which consisted of the heavy cruiser HMS Exeter and light cruisers HMN ZS Achilles and HMS Ajax. In December, the Allies intercepted a message from the merchant ship Doric Star, which had been sunk off the coast of South Africa. Captain Harwood predicted the Germans would sail west towards the River Plate, between Argentina and Uruguay, and immediately set sail. At sunrise on December 13, 1939, Harwood's men sighted a cloud of smoke on the horizon. It was the Graf Spee. On the other side, Captain Langsdorf also spotted the British cruisers in the distance, but believed they were destroyers guarding a convoy. The First World War II naval battle was about to begin. The Battle of the River Plate the Exeter, Achilles, and Ajax battleships steamed at full speed towards the heavily armed Admiral Graf Spee. Due to numerical superiority, even if the British had lost all three cruisers, it would not have drastically altered the British naval capabilities, and they could afford to risk a tactical defeat. However, for the Germans to win, the Graf Spee would have to destroy or damage the three approaching vessels. Captain Langsdorff ordered his crewmen to sail at full speed towards the British ships. 
The Allied vessels then attacked the Panzer Schiff from different fronts to split her heavy firepower. When the Graf Spee focused on the Exeter, the smaller Achilles and Ajax would approach and unleash a salvo of fire to draw the German vessel away from their sister ship. Although the Brits outnumbered the Germans, they were losing to the small pocket battleship in the first 30 minutes of the fight. The Exeter was badly damaged, losing two of her gun turrets and a smashed bridge, and was forced to retire. But an 8-inch shell then hit the Panzer Schiff and damaged its fuel system so severely that it would only be able to sail for 16 hours. As fast as the Graf Spee was, it was impossible to return to Germany, and Captain Longsdorf knew very well that more Allied battleships were on their way. With no access ports nearby, Captain Longsdorf had no choice but to seek refuge in neutral Uruguay to repair the damage. It's a trap. As the Graf Spee approached the Montevideo port, she was shadowed by the battered British Achilles and Ajax liners. As soon as the Panzer Schiff sailed into the River Plate estuary, Captain Longsdorf realized he had made a serious mistake. Instead of finding refuge, he had boxed himself into a trap. Although Uruguay was a neutral nation, the government was friendly with Britain. Under the 1907 Hague Convention's treaty, the neutrality restrictions allowed Admiral Graf Spee a maximum of 72 hours for repairs. After that period, the ship would be interned for the duration of the war. If Captain Longsdorf allowed this to happen, the National Navy of Uruguay would likely authorize Allied intelligence to board the German battleship. The law also stipulated that to leave a neutral port, a battleship needed to wait at least 24 hours after an opposing ship left the dock so it could depart safely. Thus, Britain and France arranged for their merchant ships to dock in Montevideo at intervals to keep the Graf Spee from leaving. Meanwhile, Captain Harwood ordered the British squadron to create a smoke effect outside the three-mile Uruguayan limit to give the impression of a much larger force. The British also spread rumors that an aircraft carrier and a battle cruiser were waiting outside the port. In reality, reinforcements would take days to arrive. A tough decision. Four days after the initial battle, Lungsdorf and his crew destroyed all critical equipment and sensitive information. Unwilling to risk his men's lives in a lethal conflict against the superior Allied forces, Captain Longsdorf then gave the order to scuttle the Graf Spee by allowing water to flow into its hull. On December 18th, the ship was moved into the outer roadstead by the National Navy of Uruguay, and its remaining crew was shipped away in an Argentinian tugboat. A crowd of 20,000 people gathered to witness how the ship was scuttled at 8.55 p.m. The munition explosion sent jets of flames into the air, creating a heavy cloud of smoke that burned in the shallow waters over the next two days while the Admiral Graf Spee reached the bottom of the ocean. Someone's defeat is another's triumph. In the early hours of December 20th, 1939, in a hotel room in Buenos Aires, Captain Longsdorf wrote letters to his family and the Nazi ambassador in Argentina, then put on his uniform, lay down on a German battle flag, and took his own life. In his letter to the ambassador, Captain Longsdorf wrote, quote, For a captain with a sense of honor, it goes without saying that his personal fate cannot be separated from that of his ship. I can now only prove by my death that the fighting services of the Third Reich are ready to die for the honor of the flag. German propaganda initially reported that the Graf Spee had sunk a heavy cruiser and damaged two smaller ones. Still, the loss of the Panzer Schiff was a significant blow to Hitler's small but expensive navy. The Battle of the River Plate was a notable victory for the British. Even though the HMS Exeter was severely damaged, it was able to reach the Falkland Islands for emergency repairs and eventually returned to service. The outcome also strengthened the growing reputation of First Lord of the Admiralty Winston Churchill, who said, quote, The news which has come from Montevideo has been received with thankfulness in our islands and with unconcealed satisfaction throughout the greater part of the world. Conversely, upon hearing of the German defeat and of Longsdorf's passing, Hitler simply responded, quote, He should have sunk the Exeter. <laughs>